For this video, I'll be walking you through how to create a custom tooltips using CSS only with some nice options like theming. And as usual, the video is packed with some cool CSS tricks and tips that you will love to learn about. I have here a simple button. It could be anything. I just happened to pick the button since it's the most common UI element to have a tooltip. On the CSS, I have a body style that centers everything. And this is why this button is centered here on the right. And I box size, border box, everything as well. Then I have the style for my button, which is not the focus of this tutorial. The way I'll add a tooltip to an element is if they have the tooltip class. So I'll first add a position relative to it. I background with my debugging color. And as you can see, the button is now red. The way we provide the tip message for the element is by using the data attribute named tip. And we put our text there. Which brings me down to the first limitation of this, which is it can only show text, but you could add extra markup inside the button that will be used as the tooltip. But whatever I'll show you here will work with that option if you decide to try it. The way I make sure I add the tooltip only when needed is by targeting the tooltip that has the data tip attribute. So now if I remove the attribute, we see the button is no longer red. If I add the attribute again with no value, the button is again red. But if I want to make sure the tip has value, I use the not pseudo class that filter out data tip with no value. But empty string values like space is still considered a value. If I want to hide tooltip, I just set the data tip to no value and it will not have the tooltip. Now I'll remove the debugging background and proceed to use the selection to add a before pseudo element which the content will be this data tip attribute and I'll use CSS attribute function for it. And we see it got added to the button content. So I absolute position it to get it out of the content flow. On the tooltip base, I create scoped variables for background and color, which by default is white text and black background with some transparency. And I'll use the variables on the before pseudo element by calling the CSS var function and the tooltip starts to stand out now. I'll give it some padding around its corner, make it 200% wide and max width of 300 pixels. What this will do is make sure that the tooltip is always bigger than the target element, but up to 300 pixels for the cases where the button is small, like 25 pixels wide. So in that case, the tooltip will be around 6 to 2 pixels minimum and grow depending on the text up to 300 pixels. I'll change this to 300% and 250 pixels max instead for this and position 50% from the left. The left has to do with the target, in this case, the button. So 50% of the button width, and that will make it left aligned with the center of the button. Then I'll make it 100% from the bottom of the button. The 100% means 100% of the height of the button, and that will make it sit on top of the button. But I need a gap, so I'll add 12 pixels to it for the gap. Now I'll translate the left with negative 50%. And translate has to do with the tooltip itself. Shift the tooltip to the left 50% of its width. And that will make it perfectly center on the top of the button. The zero here on the translate means 0% on the Y axis. And I could also write this to use translate X to only provide the X value since we're simply setting the Y to zero. Now I want to be able to theme these. So if I add a class of light to the button that I can target with the CSS, and all I do is change the variable color values. Like that, the tooltip change colors and you can add any theme to your tooltip this way to control maybe gap, corners, the font size, dimensions, etc. Just by adding variable for those things that change per theme as I am doing here for background and color. Now I want to add a pointer indicator for this tooltip and I'll use the after pseudo element with the border trick for that. It will have no content and border width of 6 and this is taking consideration that the gap is 12 solid border style and transparent border color. And for this to get a down pointing arrow, I'll set the border top to the same color as the tooltip background. And I'll also make its width and height of zero. If we inspect this, we see that it is a square made of triangles when you only set borders with no width and height. Depending on the triangle I want to show, I set the color just for that border. And this is the border trick to make triangles ideal to create arrowheads. Now I'll set display inline block so it respects the width and height and position in 50% from the left and 100% from the bottom. So the borders by being 6 pixels make it 12 pixels square. And by positioning 100% from the bottom, it sits right on the edge. 
If I make it all borders black, we can see the square filling the entire gap. But when I only set one of them black, that means I still have six pixels of breathing room. I'll also translate it just like the tooltip and we got our error. If I want to easily remove it, we could be checking for a no pointer class and set it to display none. But by default, the error is always there. Similarly, the way we position the tooltip is by using class. So if I set top left class here, I can target it to position it. The logic I use for positions is the first part indicates the side where I want to position the tooltip at. By default, it's top. Then I can specify the alignment on the second part. For top and bottom, the alignment options are left and right. For left and right position, the alignment options are top and bottom. By specifying only first part, it is assumed you want to align the tooltip with the center of the target element. So for the top left position, I set left to zero and remove the transform, or I could simply set the translate transform to zero. This will position it at the top and align it to the left side of the button. I'll do the same thing for the arrow, but just give it five pixels from the left instead. Now I'll just reflect that this to use common staff so I don't repeat myself. For top right is very similar. For left, I set 100%, and if I set a translate to zero, we see the tooltip is aligned with the right side of the button, but on the outside, since left is 100%. So now to bring it inside, we need to translate it back 100%. And like that, it aligns to the right of side of the button from the inside. And similarly for the arrow, I'll give it five pixels room by subtracting five from left 100%, and also refactor again for common style usage. Note that I only manipulate left, bottom, and transform properties. This will allow me for easy overrides, but I could also use right and top properties for positioning, but I would have to reset everything else all the time. To speed up this, I already have the code for all the positioning options that you can confirm by checking the link to this code pen below. As you can see, I group common styles and switch the arrow border to color depending on where I position the tooltip but always manipulating left, bottom, and transform properties. I can now position this anywhere I want just by changing the position class. Like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.